Billy and Mandy fucking a car, the end. Now, if you want the true fan fiction that we're about to read, stick around because this next episode of the SpongeBob movie game starts right now. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. So it might be nice to own a jet plane. Greetings, fellow Glitchlings. My name is Oddboy Glitch, and the good friend with me today, Junior Nitro 24. Yes. Back with the exciting next chapter of the Billy and Manny fanfiction that we read last time, which was called. Hold on a sec. Uh, Vows with a question mark. By why did not show the artist? Why why did not show the author? Okay, there we go. It was vows with a question mark by Historia Seventy. Again, shout out to that person for this. We I, again, we are not making fun of this. We're actually enjoying it. Oh hell yeah! Yes, and apparently, so are the people that clicked on the first video. Oh yeah, definitely. It's crazy. So, uh, awesome. Yeah, I hope you guys are ready because. Here we go. Hell yeah, jump into it. So this is chapter two. If you missed out on chapter one, go back to the first episode. Because you're going to be confused as fuck if you don't. Yes. Anyways, with that disclaimer out of the way, mm -hmm. let's get into chapter two. When yes. Shit is going to start getting real. Oh yes. Why didn't you take the shortcut? I don't know. Right. And, uh, okay, enough about, yeah, enough about me. Let's start. Let's this, read. Let's this read. This is about the game. This is about the fan fiction. Me. Come Let's on. <laughs> this is all about the clickbait, man. It's all about the fan fiction right now, not the game. Work was hardly fun, but it paid for stuff. Also, it did help. It's not. There's not supposed to be a comma there. I'm reading it wrong. Whoops. Let's try that again. Work was hardly fun, but it paid for stuff. Also, it did help Billy forget about his personal life as he worked. It may not seem like a thought-provoking job for so many, but he did enjoy it. He actually liked working in the warehouse where he got to be on the heavy equipment. Sometimes there was dull periods, but other times the day or night drifted by pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Though right now he wanted to do other things to keep his mind off stuff he after he got out of there. But as he sat down eating his lunch while listening to some music, one of his co-workers came over to sit across from him. Mm -hmm. So Billy, what did you do this weekend? Finishing his sandwich, Billy sighed. Went on a date with someone I'd known since we were kids, got drunk, ended up in Vegas, got married, and now she doesn't want to be with me. Snickering at that. Ah, the hot skip at a marriage in Sin City. You love the girl? S sees Billy nod. But she doesn't love you? Shakes his head. Sorry, dude, but it looks like you might have to give her what she wants. But I don't want to, Daryl. I know secretly she does, but she just wants to remain so cold-hearted that well. That, that, well, okay. You get it. Yeah. What did she first say to you when she first broached the subject? Seeing Billy's confused face, he elaborated. What did she first say to you about annulling it? Oh, she said I could do better than her. Leaning his head in the palm of his hand, he almost whispered. Sounds like the girl has low self-esteem then. Did you get a ring for her? Yeah, I had it for a while now. It was It has writing on it. Pretending he was writing on the table with his finger, he added, Thing is, she doesn't. Only once I remember her thinking she was ugly. Is she? She's hot. Chuckling, Daryl smiled. <laughs> a hot wife is amazing. That is how I feel about mine. Married for ten years now. Didn't know her as long as yours beforehand, but I love that girl more each day. Sounds nice. Listen, Billy, go to her and talk to the girl. Hey! Do a trial marriage with her, and if she still feels the same way, then grant her an annulment. Perking up, Billy stood up. That's a great idea. I wish I'd thought about it. She'd have to say yes to that. And if she doesn't see a guy in you, well, then I'll help you out. You're a decent looking guy. Thanks. Oh, I gotta get back to work. Later. Getting away from the table, Billy ran back to work in lighter spirits. Later on in the night, he drove over to Mandy's after getting the address from Patty. Determined, he got out of his truck and headed up to her house. Ringing the doorbell, he waited till she opened the door. Hiya, Mandy. Can I come in? Uh, sure. Stepping aside, she let him pass before shutting the door behind her. What do you want? Before I give you that thing you want, I want you to do one thing for me, seeing as I'm the one who put myself out there for you. Crossing her arms, she leaned against the door. Okay. We have 60 days, correct? Billy inquired. Yep. Noticing her without the ring on, he almost exploded, but tried to remain calm. 
Well, the plan is we live together. A trial marriage, you see. If you still feel the same, then I'll give you what you want. Pushing away from the door, she went over to him. So, you want us to live together to see if this whole thing will work between us, correct? He nods. Billy, it won't. Why? Why are you so stubborn? I think this is fair. Frowning, she put up her hands and walked off upstairs to her bedroom. Where are you going, Billy demanded. I need to think, Mandy shouted back as she stomped into her bedroom to sit at her vanity area. Eyeing her jewelry box, she looked at the ring as a growl started to form. Putting the ring down where it was, she stood up, stepped out into the hallway to look down the hall where the guest room was at. Billy was examining her place like she examined his when he heard her voice behind him. You are the one who proposed to me, you know, she pointed out. And we were both equally drunk that night, Billy leveled back. But I'm not the one who was carrying a ring around with me all this time for me, Mandy countered back. And I'm not one who is afraid of actually sh having feelings, Mandy, Billy bit back. Clenching her fist, she mumbled something under her breath before speaking out loud. Tell me, are you planning on keeping that apartment of yours while under this trial marriage thing? Yes. Why? Well, as nice as your place is, actually it is, I refuse to sleep in the same bedroom as you while under this trial thing, so come with me. Turning around to go upstairs, she was halted by him. Are you agreeing to this? Without turning around to look at him, she replied, yes, now follow me. First, she showed him where her room was and her office, along with the guest bedroom, where he was staying, along with the bathroom he'd be using. To him, it was a surprise she had a guest bedroom. Nice place. Yeah, I like it. Mandy brushed the compliment off as she headed into the office to retrieve something. Turning around, she handed him the key. Oh, and here's my number one rule in this place. No Irwin whatsoever. Smiling at that, he said, anything else? I'm a vegetarian, so if you eat any meat, go to the store to get it yourself. Don't pack up your entire place to bring it here. Bring what is necessary. Also, I don't believe that I have to remind you to keep clean, since your apartment is pretty clean. Shifting her eyes here and there to think, she shrugged. I can't think of anything else except that I work a lot and I was planning on turning in really soon. I'm sure you'll be in here tomorrow, correct? Yep. Uh, thanks for agreeing to this. It was reasonable. Wishing he could hug her, he just smiled lamely and waved goodbye to her as he went back downstairs. For Mandy, she only went downstairs to make sure the door was locked before heading up to her room. Going back in, she looked at the ring again. Rim would make fun of her right now. Next evening, Billy was already there with some of his clothes in the spare bedroom. Already did some light shopping, noticing she was really serious about not having any meat in the house. On the couch. Wow. And thank on Please, the couch, geez. he was just reading a magazine when she came in wearing yoga pants and a half shirt, almost making him drop his magazine. Crap, she was toned, he mused to himself as he watched her go to the kitchen without a word. Billy couldn't help but look at her reflection in the TV, admiring what she looked like from behind as she walked in there. What you reading? Oh, uh, this travel mag that I found at work, he answered. Leaning over to look at the page he was reading, Mandy almost smirked. Hawaii's history. Learning anything? He was taken aback that, that she was right over him. Just turn the page when you stepped in. I'd like to go there one day. Been there? No. It was a clipped answer before she straightened up. Be back down. Hearing her run upstairs, Billy let out a rush of air, not realizing he was holding it in the first place. As soon as he did that, he heard water rushing through the pipes, making him gulp. Damn lucky showerhead. He groused as he continued to read his magazine, or at least tried to. Without realizing how much time passed, he was surprised when she sat next to him. Read it. Or read it. I don't know. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but whatever. Great! Now she was wearing short pajama bottoms and a tank. I think I want to go to the smaller island instead. See the place they consider the, the second Grand Canyon, but far more prettier looking. Taking the magazine, he flipped it to the page to show to her as I nonchalantly swipe an ESPN notification away. Uh, looking at it, her eyebrow rose up a bit. Possibly the nicest looking place to throw someone off the ledge. Mandy mused dryly as she flipped the page. Rates are more reasonable. Also, if you get a condo, it'll be better than a hotel, though having someone come at your door whenever you want something is nice. Hands the book back. You and your servants. What would you rather have, Billy? You doing all your own cooking all the time, or at least someone doing it for you sometimes? To Billy, she sounded so seductive in how she asked that as she neared him to give him back the, his magazine, allowing him just a peek down there before she quickly drew back. 
So he knew that we. So he knew that. So he knew that was his imagination. My God, fucking read, please. Good sir. AKA myself. Thank you, self. Mandy never sounded seductive in her entire life. You sound smarter than the last time we really hung out. Why is that? She blurted out. Started reading more. Remembered some things you taught me. Also, working seems to help. I did raise my IQ up. I'm 100 now. Scanning her body, he needed to ask. Why no mean and stuff? You have you have always looked fantastic, Mandy. I don't get it. Narrowing her eyes at that, Mandy almost looked like she wanted to attack him, but held back. You know how much about... Do you know much about short girls, especially? He shakes his head. It seems we have to work even extra hard not to get fat. Ugh, just look it up. It isn't fun to explain. I do like eating that way, and I do like my workouts, so it isn't like I'm killing myself. You still always look fantastic to me. Leaning back in the couch, she brushed off the compliment. In fact, she looked like she was in another world to him. Did she ever harbor any type of attraction to anyone for a long period of time? Did she have a heart to do that? Surprised you aren't going to bed yet. I'll be there soon. You want to do this trial thing, so I'm just down here talking to you. She closed her eyes as she crossed her arms under her. Billy admired her smooth legs and saw her chest seemed pushed up just by that small action. It wasn't wrong for him to look at his wife this way, was it? It was at least cool of her to do this for him. Billy? Yes, Mandy? Are you enjoying what you're seeing right now? Oh, no! Oh, good job. Honestly? Tell me. It isn't wrong for me to enjoy what I'm seeing, he answered simply. Eyes opening up, she glanced at him with a completely unreadable expression. Time for bed. Night. Watching her pad away, he admired watching her walk upstairs, feeling a firelight inside of him. At night, Mandy stayed up when a dream invaded her, making it difficult to fall back asleep. Yes, she didn't want to deal with emotions. They were useless to her. Did she care about Billy on some level? If she had to admit that, she would say yes, but to the point of running up to him and kissing him? She doubted that. Feelings were just useless. She didn't even talk to her own parents anymore. Something they were probably pleased with. The evil daughter is gone. What the hell is wrong with Billy to have feelings for her? And that is chapter two. Of this splendorous fan fiction. Again, a shout out to... Again, shout out to Historia70 for the fan fiction. Hell we are not yeah. making fun of it. We are genuinely enjoying it. Oh, yes. Especially this guy. Speaking mm. of fan fiction, uh, yeah, season one of The Grim Resistance is on my fan fiction page right Hell now. Hell yeah. I just got done publishing them over the weekend, so go and check them out. Junior Nitro 24 is the name. Mm. Are you going to keep going? Mm. Probably because the fan fiction over. Probably not. <laughs> That's all you wanted to do in this episode was just for the fan fiction. Oh, well, might as well. People enjoy it. I'm not. I'm not very enjoyable. Well, keep so. fucking going. All right, fine. Yeah, I keep going. Jeez. But they'll do this. Move on to the. Move on to the uh, bathtub thing. I mean, you're not a completionist for this game, are you? No. No. Okay, then just move on. Well, now I started it. Now I gotta finish it. You don't have to. I mean, I'm kind of in that mindset right now. Well, okay, while he's doing that, I suppose I can read the first chapter of the pilot episode of The Grim Resistance to give everybody a taste of what uh, the series will have in store. Yeah. So, I am officially dubbing it TGR, which will stand for The Grim Resistance. So the synopsis of Episode 1, The Origin, is... This is the story of a post-apocalyptic Ensville, five years after the world's ruler Mandy took over. Billy created a resistance band consisting of all the survivors. This is only the beginning of a long journey to freedom. Rated M for mature language. Holder! So, it's a video game? No. Oh, okay. That's just how, it, that's just how you rate R-rated fanfictions. It's... It's oh, M for mature okay. instead of R for restricted. Okay. And that's the highest rating too. But the M for mature is pretty much R for restricted. It's the same. Mm. Same right. exact thing. There's K for kids, K plus for basically E10 plus. Okay. Uh, and then there's T for teen. 
And then there's M for mature. Right. So M for mature due to language, huh? Yes. Huh. Yes, there is language in this. And this guy has been able to uh, get a sneak peek as to what the series has in store. Oh, yes. Um, but I gotta say, you've done a good job not spoiling anything. Mm hmm. Well, and I don't want to sound rude, but you can't spoil what you didn't read. Oh, so you haven't read yet? Nope. Okay. Although there is one, uh, although there is one chapter that that you did read that you found kind of amusing. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, we won't we won't spoil right now. No, no, no. All right, so no. here we go. So the yeah. first chapter is narrated by Billy, but then the rest of it is the uh, third person narration. Boy. You're nearly there. Right? Oh yeah, you're nearly... Oh yeah, you did it. I didn't think you would. I'm just kidding. Alright, here we go. Anyways, here is The Grim Resistance. The Origin. Chapter 1. One day, a report on the news... Yeah, fuck off. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> That's... Who does the voice of I, Mindy? I know, but I find it very funny. No, no. Can't wait till it loads. Okay, there you go. Oh. There you go. All right, new, new, new level. Okay. One there day, a report on the news claimed that there was a dark crystal right underneath Ensville. This crystal contained so much power it wasn't funny. The crystal was. That was perfectly timed! <laughs> the, the, crystal get, the crystal has got so much power, it's not funny. <gasps> Breathtakingly evil! <laughs> oh my god, that was too good. Okay, moving on. The crystal was being heavily guarded by two big, tall men that looked like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. They were unable to stop Mandy. She got a hold of the crystal, and within seconds, the entire surface was wiped out. Everything was gone. Mandy had taken over the world. No one survived. Or so she thought. I managed to survive and round up the others in an underground base. Together, we formed a resistance to put an end to Mandy's conquest. Members included myself, Grimm, Irwin, Harold, Philip, Hoss Delgado, General Scar, Puddin, Jeff, and even Spur. I am their leader, Billy. Five years have passed since Mandy took over the world. We won't stop until justice is served. Justice is served, man. The crystal can take so much power, it wasn't funny. <gasps> Breathtakingly evil! <laughs> I know, that was too good. Oh, man. Uh, well, yeah. So, uh, tune yeah. in to the next episode for when... When we fucking read chapter three of Vows with a Question Mark by Historia70. Oh, yes. Again, a shout out to that person for writing the fan fiction. And again, oh, I have to stress and emphasize that we are not making fun of the fan fiction. Nice. We are genuinely enjoying it. Hell yeah. Despite it being based off a kid's cartoon. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's the fun of it, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you think you would, you think there fan fiction, isn't... Fanfiction.net is home to, like, really weird stuff that you probably wouldn't expect from kids' shows. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Especially there's... And you people thought, and you people thought Sonic the Hedgehog was fanfiction hell. Oh, no. No, you ain't seen nothing yet. In fact, mm, yeah. in fact, look up Life Since Billy Hit Puberty. It's a, it's a, it's a one-shot with the synopsis simply... Simply put, Billy and Mandy fuck in a car, and that is all you need to know about that fanfiction. And you're about to die. I can see that. How can you see that? Well, and I have like two reasons. One, I have glasses. Two, I'm not blind. So do I, and neither am I. Exactly, so I can definitely see things. <laughs> Dusty. On top of that. Oh shit! Oh, you made it. On top of Don't that. Happy. 
I can still see color too. On top of that, you got upgrade points. Hell yeah. Here comes the pain And train. that's the path that you have to take in order to move on. Alright. Otherwise, you'll take the long way and uh, it's not fun. Ow. <laughs> Note I... to self, avoid those next time. <laughs> I uh, uh, went the wrong way, didn't I? Nah, no, just taking the long way. Uh, it's called the scenic route, my friend. Okay. Well, that's nice. Oh, no. Oh, you made it. Okay, never mind. Probably gonna wind up doing like either like three promotions after this. Or two. Three promotions? Probably two. Just two. What promotions? Oh shit, you're gonna die. Oh well, um, you didn't die. Die now! Oh, you did. Goodbye! Wait. If they don't swim. Oh, it puts you right at the end. Oh, uh, wait, it's because it's a bath. Never mind. Hey, wait, if we're underwater, how can there be a. Oh! <laughs> hey, if we're underwater, how can there be a. T I'm scared. No more Krabby Patties, no more Gary, no more Pearl, no more Sandy or Jellyfishing or Mr. Krabs, no more anybody. Alright, here we are, oh, cutscene. Cut Who is not voiced by Alec Baldwin in this game? This is why I wanted to go back for those tokens. So I didn't have to go back. Well, you got enough. Exactly my point. It requires seven. Yeah, we, we get it. Good news, Patrick. You've got enough Tootsie Hoover tokens for me to keep oh, you Oh, yes. And what's my new ability? That. Well, I want her to say it. Hey, Flop is the mightiest flop of all! It's called the Pet Snap. Excuse me, what? Okay. <laughs> You can do the smash in the air by jumping in. A, yes. <laughs> I could have sworn when I was a kid that that was called completely something else before they made it that. The you know? Butt smash. Like it was supposed to be something else and then it. Well, it doesn't right. sound hard. That sounds hard. You can do it, I know you can. Well, if you believe in me, then I can do it. <sighs> oh my goodness. Sure, that's how it works. Key to the paddy wagon! Yeah, it's the power of love, dude. Love makes people do all sorts of stupid things. Yeah, I can see. I ain't saw that. Oh, it was bit his nose. Oh, he bit his nose. You gotta remember, my friend, love makes people do all sorts of stupid things. Stupid things. Very, very stupid things. Are you gonna... Are you gonna finish the joke? What do you mean? You were supposed to say, I love everything. I'm... I don't, though. Well, fuck, what do you want me to say? Jeez, I don't actually love everything. I'd be Do lying. You get the reference that I'm trying to make I here. I know. It's it, it doesn't it doesn't exactly represent you. Well, I'm saying it. <laughs> We're gonna try this one more time. All right, fine. Love makes people do all sorts of stupid things, my friend. I love everything. That explains a lot. Yeah. Well. I think that's a good place to leave the, yeah, the video. Definitely. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Tune in next time, time for more fucking Billy and Mandy fan fiction because that's all you guys can get enough. That you can't, you guys can't get enough of that apparently. 
But you see it in the title, and you're just like, <gasps> click. And I just gotta say, it's okay to love fan fiction. Oh, by the way, it's speaking okay. of speaking of fan fiction stuff, go check out Tom Todd Seven Seventy Four. Occasionally, he reads fan fictions and other uh, fan created web stuff and all that. So go check out his channel. He occasionally does that. You can request something to be read by him and he'll read it and all that. Yeah. So uh shout out to mm -hmm. Tom Todd 774 if you're watching. Uh, uh go check out his channel if you want to hear more fan fiction readings. Um or go check out the Game Grum Sonic Unleashed Let's Play if you want to well, hear just more. Basically anything that has to do with fan fiction at this point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh but yeah, anyways, that is yes. it for me. Mm -hmm. You can do so, your thing now. Leave a like down below if you like this video. There will be more. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Or if you just did, make sure to ring the bell so you can keep up to date to every single video and live stream that I do for my channel. I have a Discord down below so you can join the Glitchling Army today. You don't have to be a content creator. You can just join for the sake of joining. We're all friendly over in the Glitchling Army. And remember this. I don't want just you, but I want everybody to stay glitchy. Ciao, babies.